Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. Happy Thursday. I'm Jay Zawoski with Greg Boyson and Mario Tirabasi. We've got a very special show for you today. We're going to chat with two-time Blackhawks Stanley Cup champion Johnny Oduya. Before we do that, make sure you smash that like button for us on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube page as well. Podcast listeners, like, subscribe, follow, all those things your favorite app calls for. And take 30 seconds to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. So without any further ado, let's bring him in. He is calling us live right now from Sweden. It is a uh, former Blackhawks defenseman, Johnny Oduya. Johnny, how you doing, man? Thanks for joining us. I'm doing good. Happy to be here. Well, we want to congratulate you uh, on the launch, the upcoming launch between your brand, Atunia, and the Chicago Blackhawks. We've got some of the gear here uh, on our set. It arrived here maybe 10, 15 minutes ago, and it looks <laughs> awesome. We're basically tackling the staff here from stealing it and taking it away uh, <laughs> the second it hits the table. So tell us how this came together and uh, tell Hawks fans what they need to know about the uh, collaboration. Um, well, well something obviously I'm, uh, I'm super excited and uh, the proud to be able to, to put together. I've been working on the, the Atunia brand for, yeah, basically five years now, almost six years since I stopped playing and uh, this collaboration has been in the works for the last two years, I would say. So we've been trying to find the format and the time and uh, get slightly delayed after um, uh, the awesome draft. So there were some other priorities and focus, but um, I'm really happy that it's now finally, um, you know, launching. And um, I hope, um, yeah, I hope obviously um, everybody's going to like it. So that's the most important part. So what was the uh, what was the thought? You said you, you started bas this basically after your uh, your playing career ended. What was the thought of of getting the uh, Atunia brand kickstarted? Well, I think uh, in the creative process uh, for me here, I wasn't really sure. I, I like working out. I like everything, uh, you know, connected to uh, to workouts, fitness, performance, and. Uh, yeah, I, I just felt I wanted to create something. And then I think over time also uh, connecting obviously some of the brand identity and everything with uh, uh, the her heritage uh, from, from my, my Kenyan side as well. And with that, I think it grew the, the idea and the, the possibility of viewing this brand as potentially uh, a different way of how you can you can view hockey also so trying to expand the game and ex explore uh, some of the maybe traditional ways of how hockey is um, is perceived uh, i would say uh, even more so in europe than i think in in north america so i think it's a it's a work in progress uh, we try to do a lot of uh, uh, you know events and charities and things that we do one we did uh, obviously in the beginning of uh, of the exploration here was uh, working with the uh, hockey team in, in Nairobi and uh, just, uh, you know, exploring and uh, trying to uh, trying to spread a game and finding different views, really. So that's, uh, I think, what's uh, what's driving me to uh, to keep creating and doing stuff with the brand. So, yeah. You had uh, were in Chicago over the summer and got to work with some of the uh, prospects at the development camp. Uh, teaching, you know, breathing t techniques and different kind of exercises that help them along. And, and one of the prospects might have been Kevin Korczynski. I can't remember who it was. was just like, wow, I never actually thought about breathing before, which was a very <laughs> weird thing to say. Like, <laughs> But kind of like what brought that experience on and how was that to work with, you know, the next generation of hockey players and kind of give them some, some new techniques? Yeah, and that's uh, that one of the things also that I'm, I'm really interested, like I said, that I think uh, – uh, working with myself uh, throughout my career and especially the last 10 years and, and, you know, being with the Hawks, we had a very open, 
mindset around uh, you know becoming better exploring trying to push each other it didn't matter if it was you know food or training or all these things that are kind of hygiene now was was very early in the development i think uh, you know almost 10 years ago now so so a part of that was of course uh, my understanding of my uh, uh, physical and mental and emotional well-being which i think is really important especially for younger players there's a lot of pressure when um, uh, when you're getting into the league and even when you're younger try to become an athlete right and is there ways that you can cope with that but also use some different techniques maybe to um, to perform better right so just understanding and opening up that uh, this is a tool that you can use and uh, i love uh, obviously giving that back to younger players i i wish it was something that i would have known when i was you know 18 or 20 years old and uh, that was really the, just the, the, the growing grounds for that. And uh, it's also something that I do now on a professional level. I have a company connected to that as well. So uh, I think I'm in this, you know, uh, whatever you call it, the holistic wellness space and, and been for quite some time now. And uh, uh, anything that I can kind of share and connect that back, obviously, with the Hawks that uh, uh, I have a deep connection to, then um, I think that's, um, that's something really cool. And I'm super, super excited and proud about it. Yeah. Well, I saw that your company, Hale, that is specializes in the breathing techniques, just launched an app, which is very yep. cool. So if uh, people watching want to check that out, they can check out the Hale app. That's H-A-L-E. And the clothing line, of course, Atunia, A-T-U-N-Y-A. You mentioned, you know, over the end of your career is when you started really focusing on these things. And you played a lot before you got to Chicago. You were in Atlanta for a while and then came to Chicago and really seemed to find your game. What was it about arriving in Chicago that allowed you to sort of achieve that next level? Yeah, that's a, uh, it's a good question. I got, uh, I got traded a few times on a deadline and, and uh, the time before uh, wasn't probably that uh, a pleasant experience, but uh, for some reason it was uh, a good timing in my career. I, I think I came to, um, you know, a place and a structure where, where I could really use kind of the qualities that I had. Uh, there was some experience of winning before, which also was really, um, you know, obviously really positive for me. I kind of got into that, that mentality that I felt was in New Jersey when I was there in the beginning also that, uh, you know, uh, you're there to win, right? And this is what we're here for. And I, I love environments where I can be around people that's better than me because that really makes me excel and, and I can push forward, right? Uh, I don't really like being the, uh, the, the big fish in the smaller pond. I, I like to have it the opposite so I can learn. I really love learning a lot of things. So uh, that, um, that inspired me and triggered me. And then, of course, uh, you know, I could push forward. So there was a lot of things that I think that was very positive at that time, uh, being around, uh, you know, extremely good players, but also... Uh, players that wanted to win and uh, that was uh, that was the thing that we had in common I think yeah was there any kind of uh, I don't want to say like intimidation or nervousness walking getting into that locker room the first time I know we talked to some of the younger players last year and they admitted when Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taze were still here that they were a little nervous around such established guys to kind of speak up and not did you have any kind of that issue when you first got to Chicago being with a team that's already won trying to win again uh, or was it just a natural fit from day one uh, no I, well, number one I, I don't think I, I speak way more now than I did when I played so <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have spoken that much anyways but um, no I had uh, uh, I don't know how many games I had already when I got to the Hawks but uh, a substantial amount there were 500 games or something like that possibly so I felt quite comfortable in that and uh, I was just, you know, inspired and excited to be in a, in a really good position. And then obviously uh, I didn't maybe expect that uh, it, will, uh, it would turn out the way it did. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm, of course, uh, I feel very fortunate that it, that it did in that way, right? Well, and, and, you know, when you were with those teams, like there was such like star power already there and established you know you had Patrick Kane Jonathan Taze uh Brent Seabrook Duck and Keith the list goes on and on um your style of play wasn't necessarily the the, the style that like grabbed headlines or, or or highlight reels but it was so necessary to 
compliment a lot of those, a lot of those guys. What was it about like that group that you were with and, and, and that role that you played that like allowed you to feel like you were excelling outside of just, you know, the, the expectations of, of, of winning? Uh, well, it's all, if, if somebody would have the, the perfect recipe of how you put the team together, uh, they would win every year, right? So it's an extremely difficult thing to do. And sometimes you kind of hit the sweet spot for, for a few years. Um, now also, of course, with, you know, salary caps and, and all these things that are included, it's, it's very difficult to stay for, for a long time. And um, like I said, I was always comfortable in, in having that supportive role. And uh, what I really loved with, with our group was uh, kind of the acknowledgement and understanding of, of the value of different individuals. And when we had that kind of broad spectrum uh, of everybody, I really think that you, you need in a team. And, and that reflected, obviously, on the result as well. So uh, we, um, we knew what we had to do in certain times and, and you were called upon to do certain things. And uh, you took pride in that. And I, I think that's, uh, you know, something that, uh, yeah, I, I bring with me now also in the, in the kind of uh, uh, the entrepreneurial life and, and the business world as well, where uh, there's high value in seeing people for, for, you know, what they are, but not limiting them in that in some ways to have them kind of explore their space and really become uh, inspire them to become more than, than maybe they think they could be even. So, um, I, um, that is the, the thing that it comes up in my mind the most that I felt really at home in that. And, and, uh, yeah, there was, there was really no ceiling, although I knew that, uh, the work that I had to do, right. And the role that I had. Yeah. Well, we talk about those dynasty teams in, in, in tandems, right. Where there's Kane and Taves and there's Keith and Seabrook. And for those that were really paying attention, Jalmerson and Oduya was another duo that could be counted on to shut down the other team's top opposition all the time. And uh, we had Marion Hosa in here, uh, what, last summer? Last, last year. Yeah, last, last year. And he, when we asked him who is the most unsung member of that team, he said Nicholas Jalmerson. Uh, why did you and him work so well together, and what was it about his game that made him so special? Uh, well, well, Hammer is uh, he's a, he's a great individual to start with, and uh, for yeah, I don't know for some reason I think that that whole D group uh, for a few of those years had uh, uh, obviously the style of play I think was was um, uh, was beneficial to the to the group that we had. Right, we, we were kind of mobile and. We could move and we wanted to pressure the opposition and take away time and space and uh, for me and hammer it was very simple you know we, we we didn't try to complicate things too much uh, we knew kind of the tendencies that we had we like to discuss and like to play a similar game and uh, i really think that he also you know uh, from from the first year when i came in I mean, he take a he took a a few really big leaps and becoming uh, what i would agree on Haas, uh, uh, probably the best defensive player that we, we had in the game at that time. And uh, for me, it was just uh, uh, don't do any stupid things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, just kind of, uh, yeah, make some good decisions and, and play a simple game and, and really lean on the experience that we had. And uh, then we knew over time, obviously, uh, we had some good forwards that was going to score. And obviously, Corey was going to save us also when we played uh, maybe not that good. So, um, um, yeah, it's always difficult to know, like, chemistry and how that works. But it seemed to work very good. I mean, I think I, the only person I never really played with was Duncan because we were kind of on the same side. And none of us really wanted to be on the other side. But then, uh, you know, even playing with... Uh, with um, uh, with seeps there for most of 2015 as well in that playoffs uh, i felt that that worked really well and i was comfortable with that as well so um yeah the system really helped uh, i would say and we had the same idea of of what we wanted to to do and how we wanted to play which i think was a uh, you know a credit to to q obviously coming up with that system well, you had the opportunity as a guy who came into the team with, uh, you mentioned about 500 games under your belt, to play against Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves and Marion Hosa. What was it like 
on the other side of having to defend guys with that kind of ability? Yeah, that's one of the the pluses with being on a good team. Like you're you, every day in practice, you can you can work on your uh, your poke checks right against the best players, and and they uh, even though you you probably don't hit them in practice, then it gets even more difficult right to be in a position. And and we uh, even though practices were maybe not that long uh, and not maybe the the hardest hardest, we uh, the time we were on the ice, we would we would try to focus and and you know, really be particular and not really just like skate around and not pay attention. Right. So uh, you could practice those little plays all the time and be in position and uh, yeah, playing against skilled players and seeing skilled players every day is uh, of course better than the opposite. So uh, uh, it was nice when you went into the game and you know that Kaner was on your side and, and Hulse and, and uh, you know, all the other ones as well. So um, yeah, it was, um, it was a good time, yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, good times, I mean, you had two uh, Stanley Cup uh, championship runs uh, with 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 the Blackhawks, and you know we've talked with we, we've talked with Marion Hosa about uh, those those runs. We've talked to Corey Crawford about those runs, and uh, heard a, heard a lot of uh, good stories about the the, the summers after uh, those those Cup runs and. Uh, I think it was the 2015 uh, celebration. There were uh, a few photos that uh, circulated of you shirtless, uh, hanging out with the, <laughs> with with the fans and, w- and with the guys and everything. What was it like? The mid, like, I believe it was the mid, right? That's yeah. What was yeah. it? Uh, you know, the, the the camaraderie of of, of that group um, just seemed so special. Like, was it because you guys had had gone through those? Uh, those long playoff series, you know, you've been there before. Like, what was it about that group that made it special? That kind of like everybody kind of came together and, uh, you know, gelled so well. Yeah. I think we, um, well, in hindsight, I think we, we, we should have won in 14 actually as well. We lost that, uh, was that one overtime goal. And I think if we would have scored in that game, we, uh, uh, we would have played the Rangers and most likely, I think, I don't know what, LA won for nothing or yeah. something like that, right? So uh, uh, potentially we would have won that one, and then maybe in fifteen that would have been a different story then. But uh, I felt uh, going into the playoffs in fifteen that we kind of had the OK season, but uh, maybe not that type of excitement. And uh, we just won, I think, the first round just for of experience, I think. And then I remember, I don't know if, I think it was Sharpie or somebody. He's like, he looked at me, he's like, I think we actually, I think we're going to win. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> and then let's go. And that was really the feeling that everybody's like, okay, we're back. It's almost like the shark that, that smells the, uh, you know, get the, the sense of the, of the blood in the water, right? And then every, everybody just started to fire. And uh, uh, then obviously um, there was a really, <laughs> a lot of tough, uh, uh, a lot of tough series there, but um, we, I think it kicked in that the, the possibility was there, you know, yet again. So uh, I don't think that's unusual maybe for experienced team uh, teams to kind of go through that and uh, get better and also felt that we get better and better the longer we got in, in every round. You know, if the final uh, the finals and those games are kind of like a completely, it's like the playoffs within the playoffs and you can, you can sense and you can feel when you play in a less experienced team that uh, in some some certain situations it's really difficult, especially when you need um, uh, when you need to close out opponents, right? So uh, if you're down and you're just playing and you have nothing to lose, it's easy. When it's, but as soon as you need to win, you know the first game at home or uh, you're up in a game or yeah, yeah, you need to close somebody out, right? That, that's usually quite difficult to do. And uh, I think in those playoffs, if I don't remember completely off but uh we had uh, a few playoffs there when i think game yeah f- like f- four five six i think we won almost every game and uh that's usually um something that happens you know the first couple of games you can kind of go with the the energy but that that usually uh, declines and then some other things and especially the mental game in your head that you're playing against yourself almost as much uh, changes the later you go in the series, of course. So uh, uh, it was very, um, 
we felt very secure a lot of the times and we were very secure in our ability and uh, uh, that's a very um, gratifying and cool feeling to have when especially when you go into a playoffs series yeah are you still in touch with some of your former uh, teammates i heard a rumor that you and jonathan taze were surfing together recently yeah yeah we were uh taze was uh, with me a, a few weeks in in bali and then you know obviously uh, marcus kruger is right here uh, in town they're actually playing he's still he's still playing believe it or not but uh, he's still still young enough to play <laughs> so uh, uh i've tried to see him every now and then and obviously um uh, uh hammer uh when when i can i think i'm going to see him actually on friday uh, or yeah tomorrow so uh yeah every now and then we were at that horses game uh the game he had uh, the other uh the other year there and uh, yeah, we, we try to every now and then. I talked to Dunks the other day, so it's like every every now and then, but uh, not as often as uh, probably um, any of us would would like. But uh, we we try to you know keep in touch. So, well, I hope uh, I hope Taves is doing good. Everyone here is uh, he's on everybody's mind here because he had that you know fantastic goodbye game last year, and then we haven't really seen or heard from him. I hope he's doing okay. Does he seem to be happy, healthy, uh, living the life, or is he doing all right? Yeah, he's uh, he's doing good, and uh, yeah. we'll see what the what the future holds for him. Can't wait. Good. All right, Johnny, we appreciate your time, man. Thank you. You've been super generous with your time. Want to remind everybody to check out the uh, CHG, the Chicago Blackhawks, and Atunia collaboration uh, coming soon to the Blackhawks store in Michigan. We've got some of it here. It's really great stuff. Uh, we appreciate it. Yes. Anytime you want to come on and talk hockey or talk about breathing or talk about your uh, your line of merch, we're here for you, Johnny. We appreciate it. Yeah. Cool. Beautiful. I appreciate that a lot. All right. Take care. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks, Johnny. That's right. uh, two-time Stanley Cup champion Johnny Oduya joining us uh, from Sweden. Good stuff. <laughs> Good stuff. Is that our first uh, international call? I believe so. I think so. We Canada never we never really tracked down where uh, Bernie Nichols actually was. <laughs> <laughs> you just know he was in a car. I don't know if he was here. The, the connection wasn't great, so he, it could have been anywhere. True. <laughs> he was probably in the North Woods somewhere. Yeah, yeah. but that's actually, uh, that might be the first over, let's say overseas. Overseas, yes. Uh, there you go. Non-North like American yes. call. <laughs> yes, there we go. All right. Well, if you're big into... Uh, Tracking sports all over North America and the globe. Mm -hmm. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. And they are the easiest and most exciting way to play your da daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers instead of betting thousands of other, pl uh, battling thousands of other players, including the pros and sharks, not the San Jose sharks. You pick more or less, more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and then you just sit back and watch the money roll in. It really is that easy. March is over, but the biggest moments in college basketball tip off now in the month of April. Be part of the action on prize picks for both the men's and women's college basketball final fours and championship games. The NBA and NHL playoffs are starting at the end of the month, and you can win up to 100 times your money on prize pick as you and the world's best players take the game to a whole new level during the postseason, my favorite thing about prize picks is if you don't want to bet just hockey players like I do, you can bet <laughs> you can bet a hockey a hockey player, an NBA player, an MLB player, Caitlin a women's Clark. college ba basketball player, a soccer player, a dart athlete, you darts. Can, darts. Yes, if you have a real ish, if, if a problem. real problem, you could bet darts or <laughs> Call of Duty, of Call of Duty. Like you can like League it's hardcore. Legends. Sure, I don't even know what that is. That's like um, it's kind of like Warcraft. World of Warcraft, and you can bet on and that, and you and it's competitive. Yes, mm -hmm. all right. I yeah. bet the nerd wins. <laughs> <laughs> Cha ching! Which one? Okay, so <laughs> it's that. I'm one easy. of you, by the way. I'm a huge yeah. gamer. Don't Why are you guys so down on don't video games? Settle down, Anthony. Yeah. Tony. Wow, imagine, grow up. Imagine grow up, being, guys. I was late to Stop an appointment this morning because I was playing up. a video game. Imagine, imagine being 45 and playing video games. <laughs> uh, anyway, go to prizepickscom <laughs> slash chgo and use the code chgo for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars that's prizepicks.com slash chgo use the code chgo pick more pick less it's just that easy and you can go root for your prize picks picks in person with our friends at game time prize because picks, picks it should not be person. a pain in the butt 
to buy tickets. You shouldn't get buried in fees and all these unexpected things. Game time is the easiest way to buy tickets to your next big sports, music, comedy, or theater event near you. They've got those killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Mm-hmm. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. The coolest feature, I think, is those views from your seat because, yeah. you know, you've been to Hawks games before. You know that everywhere you're at for a Hawks game, you can see the ice. But what if you're going to see a concert? What if you're going to see wrestling or something? Yeah, like a different bit of a setup. You don't want to drop a bunch of money on tickets. They're going to be cheaper on game time. And then not be able to see in an ideal location. That seat, that view finder is awesome. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. So here's what you need to do. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use code CHGO. You'll get $20 off your first purchase terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code CHGO for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guarantee. And that $20 off, you can get like 20 socks games for that. Yeah, you could. Wow. Yeah. That's Ouch. Good. That's like half season tickets. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Who wants to go to 20 <laughs> socks games? <laughs> that's, that's, tough. Downside, that's tough but yeah, fair. That's, that's tough but fair. Self. Yeah. Uh, I know uh, some. I think some Hawks players are uh, headed to Burt Kreischer tonight at the yeah. UC. So maybe you know, they, they want to spend take... money to see a fat guy with no shirt on. I would just, you know, they could throw dollars at me in the We're locker room. We're right here. Room. C- right. C- 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 only fans. Give him the truffle shuffle. I actually had plans tonight with someone who has since gotten backstage passes. So wow, I'm no longer. That's cool. cool. Not as cool as Burt Kreischer. I, I hope. I, I hope. I, I hope could, your I friend can. You uh, <laughs> can <laughs> hope your friend can drink. Yes, and maybe a few other things. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Yes. Keep our young Blackhawks away from him, though. Go see him and laugh, but just don't go hang yeah. out in the after party. Yeah. We don't need that. You guys have practice tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. Um, boy, Oduya was great. Such a thoughtful guy. And, I, you know, if we had a little more time with him, um, I've listened to some, I've read some stuff with him in the past. He's always been kind of a fascinating character to me. I wonder if he's got a future in the league as some kind of leadership role for growing the game or whatever. He's, I just, I don't know. He's a guy who is, he's cut from a different cloth. Mm-hmm. than your average hockey player. And it's not to, you know, take anything away from, you know, average uh, Gordy Smith on the third line there. But uh, I just think Johnny is re- clearly really smart, clearly really motivated that he doesn't want to be known as just a guy that played in the NHL. He almost seems like his life is beginning now with these business ventures. And I hope, you know, as the NHL is looking for guys who to, to you know, for brains to pick, that'd be someone they reach out to. Because, again, he mentioned – going to Kenya to try to grow the game there. He played in Thailand mm-hmm. uh, during the lockout. Like he's a, a, a man of the world with a lot of good ideas. He's got two successful companies. Uh, that's a guy who, if I was in charge of the league, would be heading up early and often. Yeah, I, I think it's it's definitely a different uh, perspective to have on the game. I mean, you heard what he was talking about in you know, about 10 years ago when he was with the Hawks, like trying different things within yep. – you know, taking care of yourself physically and mentally and, and, you know, your, your diet and everything like that, which, you know, he's, he's definitely, um, very, very mindful of and and how you keep your body and your mind, you know, trained and ready to go. Um, and then, yeah, like all the extra things outside of hockey uh, on the periphery, like he, he seems to be, uh, tuned into that and and has a a connection and and a passion for it. So, you know, he doesn't, I don't think he seems like a guy who's going to go like, into any kind of official leadership roles. Right. Like, I think he like, it, it seems like he likes what he's doing right now, but mm-hmm. I think some sort of, you know, consultant or something, consultant or ambassadorship or something like that. Um, yeah. I, I, I would see him uh, doing, doing well in that kind of, that kind of role. Yeah. He seems like he'd be the guy that goes to different teams once a day during everybody's training camp to do like mm-hmm. these mm-hmm. stretching and breathing techniques. Yeah, not stuff exclusive like that. to the Blackhawks. Right. Um, unless they want to hire him to be their new strength and conditioning coach. I mean, yeah. I mean, then you could do worse breathing, than that. Breathing sure. consultant. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a good gig. I, I'm not surprised at all to hear that he and Jonathan Taves are hanging out. Those guys are kind of like... Surfing in Bali. Yeah. <laughs> they're, 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 Boy, uh, Taves is really, really suffering. Yeah. yeah. He misses Man. hockey I'm so much. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure he's he's out on his surfboard in but the ocean. Hearing those guys uh, hanging out. Wishing he was in Winnipeg. That that doesn't surprise me at all in the least. They're cut from the same cloth. Like yeah. They're both very spiritual, health-oriented, yeah. you know, the holistic 
uh, healing thing, and they're both it's into holistic, that. Jerry. It's <laughs> holistic. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah nice. good good to hear lots you know i think johnny's the type of guy that like there's so much there that once you get into the surface there there's a lot of stuff yeah uh, a lot of thoughtfulness like it's so refreshing to talk to uh a former and or current player that has like real world thoughts right. and stuff a lot of the times you know you, you talk to these guys, especially when they're playing. I think maybe when you get away from the game for a while, you definitely yeah. start to have yeah. other interests, and, and then you can kind of see everything from hindsight, and you can realize things. But, like, so many times you talk to guys, and it's just like – it's literally like – you're just like talking to, you know, it's literally being in the locker room of Letterkenny, <laughs> you know, just the all the cliches yeah. and everything. Well, and, and, too, like, these guys are, like – the players are like current in the moment. Yeah. Their, their lives, you know, they're, they're in front of cameras behind microphones. Then they go on the ice, then they're training, then they're at home. And it's like, okay, what else do I do with my life? Oh, I got a hockey game. Like then they get, you know, after their playing days and it's just like, Oh, what do I occupy my time with? And now like less people are in my face wanting to know my thoughts 24 seven or up in my business. Like right. their, their lives can kind of expand a little right. bit more. So you know, hope, you know, these guys, uh, some of them are just like, you know, once they're done with hockey, they are done with hockey. Um, which Oduya, it seems like he's, he's still within it, but it's more of like running parallel with his other like interests and yeah. things that, you know, his businesses and stuff. So it's interesting. He's, he's one of, he's, he's one of the guys that like didn't completely break away, but didn't also be like, I'm a hockey lifer. All I do is hockey, hockey, hockey. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people in the chat sort of speculating that, that Johnny seems to know what's next for Jonathan Taves. <laughs> <laughs> I don't he think did so. have a little bit of a, we'll see what the future yeah. holds kind of a thing. I don't dude. think Jonathan Taves knows what's next for Jonathan Taves. Or at I, least won't admit what's next I for just, Jonathan Taves. Yeah. I, whatever he wants to do is fine by me. Selfishly, I don't want to see him play for another franchise, of course. But <laughs> No, um, that would be weird. I don't know. He just strikes me as a guy who, like Oduya, is probably realizing like, hey, I've done everything I need to do. All the boxes have been checked. My first ballot Hall of Famer ness is yep. secured. And what do I have to prove? It's gonna be a bronze version yeah. of me hanging out on Madison one day. Right. What do I have I, to prove? Let's go, let's go get on with the rest of my life and, and be, enjoy it. Go take Rick Nash's job of being Team Canada's general manager or, or you know, get a front office gig. We can set up a fourth chair for you here at CHO. Yeah. Yeah. You could be our uh, not, you could be our expert analyst. Sure, yeah. <laughs> not, yeah, just not. make him read ads for like a month. You know, you know, probationary yeah. period. Here, Mister. Oh. Here, Mister. Holistic. Read this ad on pizza and uh, <laughs> John, bed, Jonathan Tay is doing a, Sol a Salerno's pizza read would be yeah, wonderful. That'd be fun. That'd be worth the price of admission for sure. Uh, but Oduya himself, give the I manscape mean, read the taser. He, he he talked about it with the you know the way that team had a way where everybody had a role mm -hmm. and everybody played a part and, and you buy into it. Yeah. But he was just the perfect addition to that team. And it was one of those that kind of flew under the radar. Like, you know, as that was going on, you speculate about, Oh, who could they bring in to be the number two center or who could play on that second line and score a lot of goals. Johnny Oduya was a perfect complement to what this team already had with Keith and Seabrook up top. And then to give another sort of two-way puck-moving guy that could still defend a uh, defender like Johnny Oduya, when a move was made, a lot of people were just kind of like, I don't, I never really heard of this guy. I've heard of him peripherally. I don't really know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And he came in, and it was so seamless. It was just such a great fit. And, uh, you know, when we look back at he who shall not be named's tenure, bringing in Johnny Oduya was inspired. And it wasn't, you know... It's it's the big names are always easy to kind of go after, but to find that guy that fits so perfectly and to what that roster had and what that roster needed, mm -hmm. one of his best moves. Well, that was the one thing that you know. I know we we crap on he who shall not be named a lot, mm -hmm. and rightfully so. But he does deserve a lot of credit. Um, and one of the things I give him credit for was he never really got like into the allure of. You see it every every year with the trade deadline. Like we're we're the number one team for the Stanley Cup. We got to go get the best player available. We got to go get the biggest name. Right. Where he should not be named. Did a really good job of finding the 
last little piece, the guy that fit yep. well, whether it was, you know, bringing back Christopher Stieg for 2015 and he had such a great year on that second line. Or Michael Hanzus. Michael Hanzus was invaluable. Michael Roosevelt, not the greatest defenseman in a row, but perfect to be your sixth defenseman yep. on, a, on a deep playoff. Yep. We didn't realize how good he was until he hurt was himself yeah. in 2015. Right. Mm -hmm. And we had to have recent college signee Trevor Van Riem like play in the freaking yeah. Stanley Cup final. Early, early Trevor Van Riem. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, not the one that's almost as good as Nicholas Jarmels in these days. Yeah. Um, but he did a really good job of not like, yeah, the, you know, you had – some of the bigger acquisitions, but at the trade deadline, it was, you know, Antoine Vermette Antoine is another Vermette, one. Like yeah. he wasn't the marquee guy, but they fit the right fit so well. And, he, you know, even, even uh, when you look at like bringing in a Brad Richardson I for 2015, that, Richards, was, yeah. that was a free agent sign in the beginning of the year, but he worked so well. So he did have mm. that knack of, Hey, I've got my stars. I yeah. don't need to go out and get another star. There's only yeah. one puck to play with. Anyway, what do I need? Do I need a face off guy? Do I need a, 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 a fifth defenseman? He had a really good knack at that and did a great job in those runs. You never made the huge trades. You went and got what you needed. Yeah, well, look, I, he was, I, always, I always use, sorry, Jay, I always use the okay. analogy that like he was given a Corvette and he got the oils changed. He checked the, the tire pressure. He you know made sure everything was, was fine. And then when there were real mechanical issues, he did not know how to fix them. Right. Yeah. He tried to fix it himself instead yeah. of calling. He watched a YouTube video yeah. about how to fix a transmission, and it didn't work out. Right. He put the uh, what is the ta flex tape on there. <laughs> Here you go, Brent Seabrook. Here's a long term extension. Oh yeah. God. Yeah, but I mean, honestly, in fairness to he hill shall not be named. It kind of was. It's I guess tale of two GMs. Like I think from when he took over for Talon, really until that Seabrook extension was signed. Right. He was a top half, top third. NHL GM, and then in his desire to keep things going and to yeah. not let it die, mm -hmm. he just buried the there team under some bad, bad contract moves. and bad moves. Like bringing Andrew yeah. Ladd back was not a great move. Right. Uh, the Thomas Fleischman, Dale Weiss trade was oh, an absolute was disaster. Ah, One of the horrible. worst trades in Hawks history. That's Deneau, right? Yeah. Yep. Gave uh, up Deneau and draft picks to get two guys uh, that, you know, Dale, Dale Weiss. Repl rep replacement level. Yeah, I mean, and, and Q hated both of them from day one, and like they just they didn't fit. So as well, good as he was at finding guys to fit during the cup years after 2015, it was like, why are we bringing these guys in? Like they, they don't don't need them. That struck me as one of those um, very much like the Brandon Manning, Chris Kunitz su summer. Cam Ward it seemed like the po the power struggle between Q right and and he was shall not be named saying. I need physical veterans to win the Stanley Cup. Okay, here's uh, Dale Weiss and Thomas Fleischman. Or I need a stay-at-home defenseman that's physical and a veteran score. All right, here's Chris Kunitz and Brandon Manning. Like, what? Mm -hmm. No, that's not what I meant. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, the, I didn't mean bad players that fit those descriptions. The, the, the Weiss-Fleischman deal was kind of like, I'm going to make a move because I have to. Mm -hmm. Because right. we're a playoff team and we have to add at the deadline. Those yeah. are just the rules when it, you didn't really need to. All right. Or if you did, not those guys. Those well, guys I'm very suck. glad I have my ice cold Coors Light here to chill after this conversation of <sighs> bless you of Excuse me, I'm bad late those era Blackhawks <laughs> no trades uh, at the end of the dynasty. And whether uh, your team is stressing you out, your former GM is stressing you out, or life in general is stressing you out, things can feel chaotic. Coors Light is the perfect refreshing beer for chilling. Anytime you're looking to take that edge off, and look, uh, we can promote this now. There's a graphic made. You want to come chill with us Saturday what, during WrestleMania? Is? Oh my! There's Live watch along. Yeah, you don't have the graphic yet. Cool. Okay. There's gonna have to be. We a, have it. There's Here. gonna. There's gonna have to just be, us. There's gonna have We're to be an edit, though. He's, he's missing the face. Uh oh. I've made uh -oh. An executive, All right. Uh -oh. Executive decision. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm an, confirming an executive that, uh, decision has been made during yes. WrestleMania. The three of us and Big Dave will be doing a watch along, and you know the Coors Light will be flowing during that. So come chill with us. Grab yourself at Coors Light because I want to sign to chill. Coors Light is the beer we reach for. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash CHGO Hockey. Write that down so when WrestleMania begins, you can just punch that up. Get that delivered right to your couch. CoorsLight.com slash CHGO Hockey. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Yeah, that's going to be a, a lot of fun Saturday night. That'll be like right after post -game. our yeah, post-game right post -game. is over. Yep. We're just going to stay on set and we'll, and we'll change the set. Hit up 
WrestleMania and <laughs> I'm bringing I'm bringing some night one. Do you have any wrestling action figures at home? I gotta look. I might. Uh, I'm bringing some of my wrestling Roosevelt so we can decorate the. There you go. That'll be good. Yeah, I've I'll got put, I'll put one forty on. of them. I'll put one on. Look like a that. I got my Bret Hart uh, <laughs> yeah. homage shirt. And hey, we're uh, we're definitely going to uh, have a good time uh, Saturday night. Might get a little uh, little messy with the the food that I've been told is going to be uh, yep. provided. Um, but hey, you know. Stick around and produce the watch along. <laughs> yeah. uh, if we do mess up our shirts, you know where we can take them? CD One Price Cleaners. That makes sense. Yeah, it's the best uh, cleaning place to go to get all of your dry cleaning needs taken care of. And customers can save over 30% on their dry cleaning bills by switching to CD One Price Cleaners. Uh, other cleaners, well, sometimes they'll charge a different price for every garment type. And they have upcharges, that, so you may be paying a different price each time you visit. But at CD1 Price Cleaners, they charge one low price hmm. for any garment, even sports jerseys, the same one low price. They have your orders ready the same or next day, whereas other cleaners can take two to three or four days to get your garments ready. And they'll even send you a text when your order is ready for pickup. Say, hey, come get your clothes. We don't want to keep them get your stuff. any longer than we need to. Uh, and it's not just clothing. They can do, you know, dry cleaning, wash and fold your laundry. They'll uh, clean your blankets and comforters. They can do tailoring and alterations. Uh, they can clean your leathered goods and your area rugs as well. So visit chg chgo.cd1, that's O-N-E, dot com. Uh, you can also check out the link in the description. And once you're there, you can pick from an in-store coupon or or an online pickup and delivery coupon option. Again, that's chgo.cd1one.com. All right, we want to welcome our new diehards to the CHGO family. Michael, Taylor, Tim, Loof, Donovan, Andrew, Nick, Corey, Jacob, and Brandon have all joined on as diehards this month. If you want to do the same, go to allchgo.com, become a diehard. Why? Well, you'll save 20% on all of our events, all of our merch at CHGO Locker, our takeovers, everything else, you get access to our members-only Discord, all of our great written content like the Blackhawks beat, which was published today, like the Rebuild Report that was published today. Yes. You get a free shirt or hat upon sign-up or $35 off a hoodie. So lots of great reasons to become a diehard. Most importantly, it helps you support us. But if you want to support us for free, do us a favor, smash that like button. Let's do a like spike right now in 5, 4, 3, 2, one like spike hammer that like button for us give it to people's elbow and i got some interesting info from uh steven the, our former producer now with the bear show trader uh says that uh like only like a third of the people watching are usually youtube subscribers so if you're here watching mm. do us a favor click that subscribe button as well that's very helpful for us and uh, if you choose to be you can be notified whenever chgo sports goes live like when there's those breaking news shows or anything like that you'll be <laughs> the first to know when CHGO is going live. So make sure you do that. And um, for the last half of the show here, fellas, I wrote about this for uh, Blackhawks beat, um, how a strong finish can lead to um, a nice start the next year. And uh, it was a popular topic of conversation yesterday on the side. I talked to Ryan Donato and Philip Kurishev about it. And then Connor Bedard was asked about it by Mark Lazarus. And then Pat Boyle asked uh, Luke Richardson about it. Uh, and to a man... They, well, I give credit when. Oh, that, oh it's what? A, yeah, when other concept. when other people do things, I give credit for it. Oh, oh, yeah, God. why wouldn't I? It's a strange I'm a concept. human being. I didn't realize we did that in this city. Yeah, we do that. Okay. Cool. Um, but all of them just taking the high road. Kind of said, <laughs> "Hey, let's you know, a strong finish can lead to a, a really nice start to the next season." And, you, and instead of feeling, "Thank God the season's over," you're kind of feeling like, "All right, that was a great way to end. We finished strong. Can't wait to get back." Feel good about it. Even yeah. just the mindset from. You know, you take your couple weeks off or you go to the world championships or whatever, and then you start working out again, your head's in a different place. You're you're thinking differently. And it's sort of what Johnny Oduya talked about is like you wanna be you wanna get better because you see what the end game is here. You see yeah. the light at the end of the tunnel and you kind of don't want to be that weak link. Whereas if things finish poorly and it's just a slog to the finish line, you know, it can just feel like thank God it's over. I don't want to do this anymore. And the anecdote that Pat Boyle said was, I guess, um, uh, Rick Tockett said that the good finish the Canucks had at the end of last year 
led them to their good start and good season this year, which I think is interesting. Yeah. And that's a guy, obviously, a, a super highly decorated former player, um, former analyst, former coach, gambling expert, all I'm those things that you, Rick Tockett is. Say, bet you he has prize picks on Yeah, he phone. bets on darts all the time, I wow. bet. Um, him and Miss Gretzky. Him and Janet. <laughs> but, uh, Damn it, Janet. <laughs> but it's a guy who knows every angle of the sport, and, yeah. and he buys in, too. So there's seven games left. I wonder what in your guys' minds would constitute a strong finish. Two wins, three wins. Um, look, I mean, if they if they win four of their last seven, like that's that that would be strong. Yeah, right? that would be. You know, they they were what seven and seven in in March. Yep. Um, you know, and and we were feeling good. We were like, hey, they're winning some games. Like some of these post games are fun. Like you know, it's you 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 remember like oh yeah, winning is like a good feeling. And, uh, you know, I, I think if they were to win four of these last seven, even look, even three of the last seven, like in those four losses, if they're competitive, if it's like, maybe they just get outplayed, like, it's not like, oh, they didn't start on time. They were down three, nothing going into the first intermission and just couldn't play, play catch up. Like that would be a little disappointing, but if they're, you know, strong games, uh, down the stretch, win a couple, like that's great. Like you, you want that. Um, that tone to be set for the team going into next season, especially with the young players. And Oduya said it like, you know, he got to Chicago and there was the expectation of success and, and competitive right. games and, and winning. And, you know, it was a culture that, you know, he, he missed when uh, he went from New Jersey to uh, Atlanta. Um, and then, you know, Atlanta wasn't there for much longer. Um, and then he came to Chicago and it was just, it was something different. So I think uh, that is what we hope this team gets to again and, and Nick Foligno talked about it too I forget if it was either with us or with uh, uh with the media after practice yesterday but it was like you know they're they're trying to establish that identity of like this is these are this is Chicago Blackhawks hockey again yep um and and that needs needs to mean something so a, a strong finish here is is a good step in like establishing that going into next year yeah, and it, yeah it's, 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 it's not, a tough path it's not an easy like I'm looking at the schedule here and like it's a hard. It's you've a got, hard seven games. Yeah. You've got the Stars on Saturday, who have the best record in the Western Conference right now. Just took care of Edmonton and have handily beaten you three times already this season. Then you have the Minnesota Mild coming in. I mean, Wild on Sunday. <laughs> They're not in the playoffs. That that's a winnable game. Yep. Uh, then it's away at the Blues, who, oh. who still have some spoiler time. <laughs> still have some. Uh, would love to close that long door. shot dreams of of making the playoffs. That's a watch along, by the way. For yeah. us. Uh, then it's watch then it's back yes, home Salernos. for the uh, <laughs> Predators, who have been one of the if that's a. I mean, that's yeah. a playoff team. That's team outside of, like, maybe the Stars have Red been hot. the best team in the Western Conference have since they, the All-Star Have break. they lost in regulation yet? I believe they have. Okay. Because there was, like, a 20-game stretch where they didn't lose in regulation. Then the Carolina Hurricanes, another playoff team, Stanley Tough. Cup contender. Tough team. Then you end on the road at Vegas, a team you've beaten in their building once, but yep. they've kind of solidified themselves as a playoff team. And then at the LA Kings, who Ooh. have... <laughs> Had their Dusted way. the Hawks twice this had year. So this year. Yeah. win two of those, I call it a strong finish. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> look, strong finish for me is not wins and losses. Like if you can somehow, you got 14 points available. If you somehow get six points in those sure. four out of 14, anything six or more is amazing. What I want to see in these last seven games is no more of those San Jose games. No more of those Ottawa no. games. Be, play 60 minutes. If you play yeah. 60 minutes against the Stars and you lose 3-1 to one just because they're so much better than you, I have nothing, nobody should be, you know, f be shamed in there. There's nothing wrong with right. losing to a better team, mm -hmm. playing your best. If you go out and you lose 7 nothing to the Stars and then 4 nothing to the Wild, then you're like, this is... That's tough. It's, it's not a good look. But play 60 minutes each night. Give it your best. You know, if you do that, you may have a shot to win three to four of those games. Surprise us. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you maybe you catch the Stars napping on Saturday and you get the jump on them and, and you, 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 you get a goalie win or something like that. So, um, and, uh, you know, it, it, not so much wins and losses. I just want to see seven games where I'm not complaining about the start. I'm not complaining about a slow yeah. second period. Yeah. I'm strong, not complaining about blowing efforts. a third period lead. I want to see 
60 minutes yeah. or more each night. Uh, and Sunday's game, I heard uh, earlier in the chat, there would be pocket bacon. Man, this weekend Sweet. just gets better and uh, better. Hold on, it's even better than that because I believe he just said, hold on, uh, where was it here? Oh. Chocolate covered? Oh, uh, that's going to be very melty if that's, it's in your coat pocket. That's, yeah. that's going to leave chocolate in your pocket. Yeah, it's going to be like um, mall Both rats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, would you like a chocolate-covered pretzel? <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm not going to say no to the chocolate-covered bacon. Yeah. But, uh, you know. I don't want it melted. Just put a couple ice cubes in the, in your pocket. Yeah, there you go. Please. You go. Wet chocolate? <laughs> no, the Wet. chocolate's in a Ziploc bag. Yeah. And then he puts ice cubes in his pocket outside the Ziploc ice bag. Ice cubes in your pants. That's the way to do it. Right. I mean, if he really liked us, he'd do it. All right. Well, we're off tomorrow. Mm-hmm. We are back Saturday and Sunday post game. And remember, Saturday night after the game, when the Hawks lose to the Dallas Stars, <laughs> we'll be watching WrestleMania together, the three of us. It'll be fun. And Big Dave. So It'll stick around for that. That's but it's going to be a tag team match, right? This is this night one? Yes. Yes. The Rock the and team. Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and. Seth Rollins. That should, should be, be fun. A ton of fun. So uh, join us Saturday and Sunday for Hawks post game shows. And we'll talk to you Saturday for the WrestleMania watch along. Thanks to Law for running the show. Thanks to Johnny Oduya for being here with us. Thanks to the Blackhawks for running over some merch last minute so yeah. we could have it here on set and in our homes. We appreciate them for that. We'll talk to everybody Saturday night after Hawks and Stars on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. <laughs> Y'all silly like the mayor. 